Hello, Kannan sir. Yeah, uh, Dr. Subhulakshmi, happy to see you and hear you once again. So it's always a pleasure to um, work with our partners, and uh, BIT Chennai has been doing tremendous work, and uh, we welcome all colleges to come forward to work with us. And some of you are students. Take this message back to your college, and tell your uh, teachers that we are very keen to work with you. And uh, I told you uh, yesterday about various software that FASI promotes. In every one of them, we are interested in working with you. This, um, in fact, I would say the FASI project is mostly outward oriented. That is, uh, we don't do much for. iit bombay community we do mostly for students across the country our uh, part partners are also from other country of course we do have a core set of people at iit so uh, most what i wanted to convey by that is to say that many of the things that we do have been arrived at keeping the interests of colleges in mind their requirements their constraints and their capability because uh, sometimes the students are uh, extremely good and for various reasons they end up in a small college right it is not their mistake at all maybe they could not uh, appear in an entrance exam maybe they are from a uh, that person is from a poor family whatever is the reason very bright people but in uh, some colleges uh, you know remote uh, colleges and so whether we can um, um, uh, whether we can um, uh, you know bring them on board whether we can uh, benefit after all this project fossi project is funded by uh, taxpayers money that's the reason we are able to spend so much time uh, with you people um, because uh, all the salaries of the staff members and so on are paid by the government okay so um uh, of course this year uh, there has been a problem because the government itself uh, didn't have the money uh, fossi project didn't get the money that it uh, would normally get spoken material didn't get any money some of we are still managing because uh, these are these are uh, projects that cannot be developed overnight we have been in existence for 12 years now we started in 2009 may that's when i came to know that fossi was funded that's when i came to know that spoken tutorial was funded by mhrd in those days so we are close to completing 12 years okay and we have survived uh, because of various reasons and also because of good work we have good work done good work as a result uh, government after government has seen that um that this uh, project should be supported so did the mission director and ministry and you know so on and so forth so uh, uh given that we are funded by taxpayers money that means it is coming it, it should go to as many people as possible and that's how we designed the spoken tutorial projects that's how we designed um fasi also your silab textbook companion has been contributed to by 1000 students and faculty members across the country almost every good college will have contributors and now in some areas silab has become better than matlab okay if you want to set up a new problem for example for your lab or for your whatever it is i would say that spoken tutorial i mean as uh, matlab has been created with uh, billions of dollars of investment that means tens of tens of thousands of crores investment whereas in uh, what is the money spent only on silab textbook company in very little maybe a few crores but i would say in that particular area namely setting problems this is better than matlab i am sure same thing can happen for all statistical users are for problem setting based on textbook companion that you have you know one lakh um, problems textbook problem solved using r then for almost any command there will be so many examples 
that you want to know how to use that particular command in R. Okay, you want to do some statistical calculation, then you do a Google search, you find out what that uh, command is, and then you can do a search. So that that's a tremendous thing. Uh, and uh, uh, did you do that, uh, Smita? Did you take a problem and do a search? Because I may want to do that. Yes. In, hmm? Yes, sir. This? But you can show it actually. What example did you? What uh, command did you show? Uh, P norm, sir. Normal P. distribution. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Then you have already done that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of a thing is uh, as more and more people contribute, the example set becomes richer and richer. And for every command, people will have let's say fifty to hundred examples to look at. Of course, we may not have so many now. Fifty to hundred examples. Then one can say that no, no, I'm a I'm a statistical person, a statistician. So I will look at statistical uh, thing. Somebody will say will say that I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm looking for a mechanical engineering textbook where it has been done, right? Things like that. So that way, uh, I, and then because they are on the cloud, they can modify the uh, code, change the values. They've got a new problem. They can say that okay, okay, this is my problem. I set it. I created it, and solve it on the cloud. You get the answer. Check that it is correct. So quickly in no time. Now, how do you find PNAM? How do you know that you have to search for PNAM? Do a Google search. Google search will tell. Okay, I have this statistical operation in mind. Google search will tell. Okay, this is the R command. Okay. So you can find the command name. You don't even know the command name. Do a Google search. Find the command name under. textbook companion you search for that command you'll get all the examples that refer to that that use that command then you can depending on whether you are a chemist physicist statistician psychologist whatever you choose a book that is closest to book that you might have used and i mean it's a fantastic thing it's a great resource created by students created by us it's not an imported solution it's our solution right as more and more people start using r more and more people contribute and we have more and more textbook companions more and more examples and so that makes it very easy for a faculty member and and what is the investment made on uh, our project on textbook companion very little how much money has been invested in spss tremendous amount of money i would say for problem setting r will be better why because we have the textbook companion right because in scilab we have 75000 examples total number of examples coded in scilab right i was trying to look for partial fraction expansion <clears throat> what's the command uh, i don't remember because i don't use uh, scilab all the time same thing will happen to you you might be a statistics uh, person you do theory whatever write papers whatever you may use r once in a while not every day so you may not remember anything you may not remember the command you may not remember the syntax you don't have to remember anything after all anyway you will go to google and find out the command closest code take it modify it use it so when those facilities are available why should you remember given that given that you have that freedom how do you still use it you don't remember the syntax you don't remember the command i am saying the search with the textbook companion is going to help let me just uh, show that because that's a i mean that's it's a true thing it happened to me uh let me just see where are we okay let me take it here so let me go to scilab.in ah uh, before i do that i like to let me uh, let me do this partial fraction expansion expansion scilab because i don't even know the command ah uh, the command is pfss okay so i do a google search i find the name of the command pfss okay now if i do a pfss you'll get lot of hits but it may be not very easy to use so what do i do i come here of course i'm doing it for scilab.in same thing uh, smita explained with uh, with r so search under tbc code because this is where i said 75000 examples are there so i search for pfss okay it says 140 results found the first book is on uh, by head okay and then uh, many many examples from that book 
then you have ashok's book then you have sali vahanan's book then manke's book okay 27 this book i when i look at it i say hey i used this when i was a student so i am a family i am familiar with this book so i'll open this view code view code for this example if i click this it opens on the cloud there you are chemical engineering process control whatever final value theorem and look at the value pfss okay so i know how to use it so i execute okay uh so it executes hopefully it depends on whether our cloud is working not working okay R lately we have had some problem with our cloud so anyway you will get the result then what will happen is you can actually modify that uh not sure why it is not coming yet anyway coming back to uh this uh, you can maybe try it later i'll have to uh, follow up with our team sometimes it doesn't work but of course i can download this scilab code for this i can also do that let me download this code example 4.2.zip okay and let me open uh, my scilab because it is open source i have a copy of it okay i have all legal software only on my uh, machine so i am uh, opening there it is i have opened scilab right and then let me see if i can get this uh, code that i downloaded is it downloads minus lrth there it is so unzip ex4 there it is so it has got it has given me example 4-2.ac cd x4.2 okay there it is emax see this this is the same code same code that you saw here for some reason this is not executing okay some problem is there in our uh, system oh there it is it has worked but i have now i have it here also i can also execute locally on my scilab okay you got to see that also and download the code you can run it locally now can somebody tell me why it is displaying denominator right look at this denominator s into s minus 2 into polynomial minus 2 minus 1 to 1 with s as the coefficient it if you evaluate this you will get this right can somebody tell why numerator is not displayed what happened to num why is it not displayed anybody who knows matlab will know right well actually this, I, i have the semicolon right so i remove the semicolon let me run it now whenever it executes okay i don't know why it is so slow today oh there it is maybe i have to press it twice now numerator also is displayed see this and here are the partial fractions one is s plus 2 S minus two, S plus one, S minus one, and so on. Right? Partial fractions are there. Now what I can do is I can go and change this. In the place of zero, let me put two. For example, I execute. Now I got two here. I have set my own problem now. I solved my problem. This is my problem, right? Because I changed the number, and it suits my purpose. In fact, this is the real way i used it to set up quiz paper quiz problem on partial fraction expansion for my control students okay i used to teach process control in that semester and i wanted to set up process uh, partial fraction expansion problem and i didn't want to do it manually so i said hey scilab is there why should i try but then i don't use scilab day in and day out don't remember the command so this is a you know fantastic thing and we have that for r that uh, that uh, uh, smita uh, demonstrated the other day right she demonstrated that day so we have a textbook companion on r and lots of books i think uh, 30 books are there how many books are there uh, smita 37 sir 37 books 
Yeah, yeah. I, 55 I, I, in progress. So yeah, people are working. Five, five in progress. Uh, 55. Wow, 55 in progress. Yeah. You see, it is actually a very good thing because you get recognition, right? Yes, sir. There was a student of ours. There was a student of uh, Sastra, and uh, he uh, got an assistantship to study in University of Pennsylvania, and he had contributed Scilab textbook companion. Right. There was another student who went to Rutgers. There was a third student who went to uh, for an internship to Japan. And they all said that, look, I have this. Uh, I don't know if you have seen that. Let me show that again. By the way, it is um, helpful for both faculty members and students, but definitely it is for helpful to students. Uh, let me come here. So this is r.fasi.in. So textbook companion project. So completed books. OK, these guys have not done it properly. I'll show you why it is not done properly. Because let me show you in scilab.in. This is what I'm telling our people. Our team members also have to improve slightly. Scilab textbook companion project. Let me see whether this works. Completed books. Uh, maybe you have to click that. OK. All right. So I, I'm uh, complaining too early. Although I think DWSIM, we are probably doing this. DWSIM for C.in. Flow sheeting project. Completed flow sheets. Look at this. It says, this is the topic. What is the name of the university? Where is this person from? Who created this? This is how every one of our uh, web pages should be there. Smita, you should change the web page. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, we will have to do that. Yes. Yeah, do this for every one of them. Do it for SciLab. Do it for Open yes. Every one of them, people should say where they are from. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Now, if you click that further, uh, r dot uh, dot in. Let's say next to companion project, completed books. You take that first course in probability by Sheldon Ross. It says here at least, IIT Bilai student has done. Okay, and this is uh, you can download the entire code, download the PDF file. Uh, every one of them we are giving recognition. Business statistics for contemporary decision making. This is somebody from Techno India NGR Institute of Technology. Right. So this kind of recognition is available to all of you. Fifty-five books are in pipeline. Don't you want to join them? Don't you want to create? Yeah. So let me stop sharing. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, Smita, uh, fantastic work. Um, uh, yeah, are there any you, questions? Sir. Yeah. Are there any questions? Did you all like uh, today's uh, programs? How was today's? Uh, and do workshop? you want to tell them how industry also can contribute? Do you want to uh, actually explain them the way? Industry also can contribute. Yeah, industry also can contribute because uh, industry also for somebody, uh, somebody may want to. Um, in fact, uh, many of our students after B Tech end up in uh, in a in Dalal Street, for example, or uh, in some banking sector. And uh, two years later, they want to get back to education, and they want to apply. And sometimes the universities say or the industry, some other industry, they say, but how do I know that you still know your stuff? It has been two years since you graduated. Maybe you have forgotten all your stuff. Then they say, no, no, I've been doing this. Look at this. Here is the proof. So it helps the industry. It uh, Industry sometimes can come and say that, look, we have this problem. Can somebody, can some student, you seem to have access to a lot of bright students. Uh, will you have, will you ask the student to solve this problem? So we can easily pair up. There are many things we can do to industry. Uh, Smita, if you had something else in mind, you please go ahead. No, sir. Actually, yeah, industry can. And the, basically, industry, if they start using uh, open source software, they will actually uh, save a lot of money. Oh, this is the question. Can people from industry also contribute to us? Yes. Yes, they, they can contribute. contribute. Of course, they can contribute. In fact, yeah. um, let me just point out 
um, if anybody uh, usage of pirated software is prohibited forbidden but uh, sometimes what happens is these companies turn a blind eye when students do this in colleges they don't mind that but the same college same student does the same thing after graduating going to industry they will get into big big trouble right there will be court cases um, and the company may even have to close down because the penalties are huge so typically what they do is people don't do the piracy in industry so uh, but then they can't afford many copies for every every user there has to be a separate copy of that commercial software the so spss can be very expensive not many people can use i mean for if there are 10 people using it 10 simultaneous users you better have 10 licenses okay in fact some of them are so mean that if you have a multi processor gpu uh, let's say quad core then they will say you need four licenses okay it's uh, terrible that way so what happens is when there are 10 users of spss but you have only one copy you have only one copy in industry because it's very expensive it can cost several lakhs per copy per license so when one person is using it nine other people are waiting for their turn whereas if they use r all of them can use it simultaneously right and r code is reliable they use the same uh, highly tested outstanding code it uses linpack lopack uh, you know whatever state of the art software is numerical algorithm is it uses so as a result i think uh, uh, industry for industry it makes lot more sense certainly for students it makes lot more sense because uh, supposing uh, i'll give another example to industry supposing uh, industry wants to outsource uh, wants to develop some code for them then they go to some consultants the consultants say okay i will develop it for you okay now supposing there are two consultants one person from somewhere overseas they say that look i will develop it using spss it will be fantastic okay and they have to charge some amount now there is another person from india a small time entrepreneur startup that fellow says look i can also develop it but i will do it in r okay who's which code is going to be cheaper what do you think that project cost project cost which is going to be cheaper one company develops it on spss another company develops it on r whose development cost is lower the open source naturally right because the person who is going to develop it on spss should have a license okay that means they should they should pay for the spss so the development cost is higher all right now the same program same thing the programs both of them do the same thing one of them does it in spss another one does it in r now for you as a company which is cheaper to use naturally it's once again the open source software because one is development cost the second is usage cost because they have developed it they have given it to you if it is spss you need spss code and as i mentioned earlier if there are 10 people waiting to use it and you have only one license only one person can use it whereas the r every one of them can use it simultaneously and for free they don't need licenses so in multiple ways this is going to be lot better and obviously because of this people who know r will be much in demand companies would want to hire if somebody says that unless you know spss you won't get a job don't believe them they are lying they are cheating because they have a vested interest they want to sell spss so they are making all those statements right after all how long will it take for you to learn uh, spss if you already know r in no time you will pick it up right so it is going to be helpful to students it is going to be helpful to industry and um, in fact through fasis uh, association we will even hopefully connect uh, students with the industry through job fairs through various projects all those things are going to happen so we invite all of you to work with us okay
Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So to this, that uh, even for the research nowadays, people use the R thing actually for statistical analysis. People use R uh, because uh, see many things when you write the code, even for the you are not in a big place, still you can uh, do all the analysis in R freely actually. Otherwise, having a copy of MATLAB or SAS is too costly. Yeah. So anybody has any uh, question, anything, anything you want to discuss about today's workshop? Uh, do you want to give some feedback about uh, today's workshop? Any And feedback form has been shared with you. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, they have not sent it in the mail this time. You will have to uh, log in on NMI. We have received the mail also. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, some people, maybe some people might not have received it yet, but you will have to go back to NMI City website on their dashboard. Once you log in, you will be able to see the feedback form. Does we anybody want to give a feedback? They have received feedback from 45 people. 45 people have answered this uh, feedback form. Right. Yeah. We request all other people also to uh, give the feedback because it will help us to improve the quality of future workshops. Correct. So just one question that uh, you know like there are some 17,000 some packages in R. So like uh, what like is it there a way to know you know the most relevant packages that uh, you know that might be useful for statistics and data analytics purposes? Um, so the answer I give is Mata Pita Google Devam. <laughs> okay sir. Thank you sir. Okay. It also depends on that uh, what specific uh, analysis you want to do. So you can uh, look for the specific analysis and then search for the packages. Yeah, you may get different packages for the same analysis. Uh, there are some uh, ifs and buts for each of these packages. Uh, but that you will be knowing if you really know that what kind of analysis you are going to do. Yeah. Thank you, sir. There is uh, one more way uh, you can stay updated with the newly new packages and the updated packages. So it is. Cranberries. So Cran uh, refers to the comprehensive R archive network, and there is a website known as Cranberries. It updates regarding. I am sharing the link in the chat. It updates regarding all the new packages, updated packages, and everything. So R Studio itself also have uh, a link in which they uh, show the top packages of the previous month. So those are the packages which are in uh, most demand. So there, there are, uh, I will also share that link this one minute. So basically you can, you may look at uh, RStudio link and you may look at Cranberries. So that will uh, give you a uh, idea of the, all the updates regarding packages in R. So as Kanan sir had said that Google is always useful, but if you want to just stay updated uh, on the packages which are getting updated or, or new packages which are available, you can um, refer to our studio and this Cranberries. Thank you, Rekvija. That was really helpful here. Okay. Um, what else is there in the agenda, Smita? Sir, we are almost uh, done. So we, if I mean, anybody wants to give a feedback about the workshop, about their... Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, we can you, do that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, get some feedback. People want to say anything, let them feel. Go ahead. Anybody would like to say anything about uh, these three days feedback, uh, th three days workshop? Uh, Good evening, uh, sir. Namaste uh, yeah. to all the uh, all the faculties. Uh, so my name is Amar Shivastav. So we, uh, um, I, I want to say that uh, we are very grateful to respected uh, Kanan sir, uh, Smita ma'am, and Radhe sir, and for C assistance uh, for conducting this workshop. Uh, it was a very fruitful and sublime experience for me and uh, looking forward to attend more such workshops. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, yes, Madam uh, Smita Maram. Yeah, yes, sir. I, uh, I guess uh, if possible, uh, you could share uh, the recorded session video. Also, so. Yes, yes. We will uh, edit all these things. Now we have recorded all the sessions. So we yes, will edit. Uh, uh, the live sessions out and then we can make it so exactly so if you have missed some, some of the, some of the sessions also, so that we can uh, watch them uh, we can go through them like uh, in the offline thank you yes sir thank we'll you. we'll do that uh, good evening ma'am 
good evening yes abiral please go ahead uh so uh, sir actually uh, before this also i had registered for one more uh, workshop on silab only silab advance yeah and uh, uh, and there uh, we were actually given a task to complete the x course uh, for uh, a textbook yeah uh, and so uh, now actually i have been uh, i have been offered a job in some uh, uh, consultancy firm so I, that's why actually i needed to learn bit uh, r so i was just searching for some sources and fortunately i found that again there was a workshop for that so i am i'm very grateful for this sir because uh, actually i didn't know r before this and uh, since my third year i am actually trying to find some sources where i can also learn some basics of machine learning so from this workshop uh, it really helped me and uh, like uh, i actually know the direction where i have to go to uh, like no data analytics and machine learning and all these two so thank you for that sir so where are you studying abiral uh, sir i was in vit chennai only okay vit chennai very good uh, initially sir we were uh, given a fossi workshop on open form in second year Mm-hmm. So from there we came to know okay that there is something for C. So yeah, tell your uh, friends to contribute to for C. Yes, but sir. Yes, sir. I I keep on uh, sir sharing all this uh, to them also. Like you can use this. Yes, it's very and helpful. also they can also contribute. They can yes, learn sir, by sir. themselves. They can contribute to textbook company and case study. Yes, all sir. kinds of things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Abhiral. Yes. We had a large contingent from uh, Kolkata. Is there anybody from there? They want to say anything? Okay. What is the other college uh, from which there are a lot of people? Was it in uh, Gujarat or Rajasthan? We had uh, another college. I forget the name now. So can somebody? Uh, would anybody? Any uh, anybody want to organize an R workshop in their college or in their company? Anybody is planning to do? Anybody who attended this workshop? Because you can, you will get all the material. All the spoken materials are there. You can do it yourself now. anybody want, would want to do this and would they want help from fossi to help you contact good evening sir good evening uh, sir what will be the procedure to conduct the workshop uh, you already have the r uh, material you know um, r uh, spoken tutorials are available yes right? sir yes sir so sir we if we oh. want to do it in collaboration with fossi Then no main main thing is i told you about because see there are two things one is uh, learning r itself the other is um, learning um, uh, the machine learning for example machine learning is uh, this is what i told you right in the beginning the objective of this course is to teach r it is not to teach machine learning because machine learning cannot be or data analytics cannot be taught in 3 days like like what we are doing yes here. sir yes sir that is true it's a hands hands on kind of a thing that the yeah. focus is on uh, learning to use r for various applications that is the goal of this uh, uh, workshop and if you want to do similar thing in your workshop in your college uh, you can do that because whatever we have done most of it is done using spoken tutorial the reason for doing that is that you actually have the material now you can ask your students to follow the same pattern and learn from that and you are there to uh, help and if there are further help required they can post it on the forum and we will be able to our team will be happy to answer those questions remotely from here uh yes sir uh, right? thank you sir sir but if we want to convert it into some kind of fdp some advanced concepts if we are interested in introducing so in that case we'll be needing help no advanced concept then you should have it right i mean there you should go to people who have who know the advanced concepts in your college you okay. request them to teach because okay. fossi team members do we don't have that uh, expertise i mean we have to ask some other people to come and explain okay sir okay yeah. sir got it yeah. yeah thank you sir yeah because you can always ask somebody from some other college also Yeah, yeah, that is true. But I was asking you whether Fossi this uh, facility is available here also. Fossi will be happy to help you with the conduct of our training. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You are from which college, Vandana? Sir, I am from uh, Delhi University. Okay. So our, ours is a degree college. Mm-hmm. So from arts, commerce, and other streams, the various courses are there. In in uh, Delhi itself, NCR. Yeah, in, Del- in Delhi itself. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
Yes, this is Vandana. This is Vandana, madam. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, madam. My name is Ilamar, and I'm faculty assistant professor from Sastra at Deemed University, Tanjavur. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, possible? Can I help you, madam? In organizing our workshop in your college? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I, yeah i'll i'll send you my sat profile to you so that you can go okay so i'll be in touch with you sir yeah uh, okay then thank you madam yeah okay so can you yeah yeah i'll 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 send my mail id madam i may ask smita madam also uh, what i'll do it i may ask smita madam to forward all of their mail id yeah yeah sir i got it in the chats yeah yeah yes, exactly okay. yeah yeah thank you madam okay thank you sir smita madam are you available i'm sorry yes sir Uh, madam, on uh, small help, madam, uh, I can I get uh, uh, all of their participant email ID to the mail ID that I have mentioned. Elamaran at ec dot sastra dot edu, if possible, uh, so that I can collaborate uh, with them uh, if, if needed. If they need any kind of help uh, in organizing or uh, in kind of any uh, even data science related uh, workshop or seminars, uh, uh, even if it is a three hours or one hour or one day seminar, now no, we could able to help. Okay, sir. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Yeah. Happy, happy to see uh, uh, collaboration here. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, okay then. Um, is there uh, any other thing? Because we have come to the end of uh, the workshop. Uh, Professor Rade, you want to say anything? Because we have to end the uh, workshop now. Okay, uh, things were covered quite well actually today, and the participation is also very good. And I was very happy to learn that people have started collaborating here itself. <laughs> so the good thing you can uh, talk to the other people, and then I suppose you need some more advanced kind of things. What Vandana was saying, maybe uh, first you should kind of make it very clear what kind of things you are having, and then there are many uh, other uh, resources. where you can find the uh, people to go for this faculty development program kind of thing so i think uh, nptel has something and other uh, resources are there so if you want more you can look for the other resources also fasi can help you in conducting the uh, things with the r or other uh, open source thing what we are having yeah yeah i think everything went well so if you have any other question or other query uh, you can ask us now hello yes uh, jyotsna Uh, i want to say thank you for all the organizing team for because this is my first experience with the r i learn and i think i will go with this and maybe i will be having some problems i would like to again uh, connect with you all uh, post your question on the forum go yes sir yes yeah. post it on the forum our people monitor that and answer those questions Yes. And uh, one thing actually, we have not covered the entire spoken tutorial uh, in this workshop. Uh, what you can try is that uh, you can look at the other uh, tutorial which is not covered in the workshop. They are also fantastic. You can learn lot more things from them, actually, yes. uh, by your own. And we yes, have, sir. in fact, more tutorials coming up. Professor uh, Rade is helping uh, develop next set of uh, spoken tutorials on classification and clustering. so those tutorials will be available soon also okay. so we constantly add tutorials josna where are you from sir i am here in jammu uh, ah. in central university of jammu i am a phd scholar here in uh, molecular mm -hmm. bio department i am a research scholar of uh, biotechnology okay happy oh. to have you josna yeah this is the one thing which is good for the r actually these uh, students not from a, a, a statistics background or not from this thing all these applied subjects they need to do the data analysis and for that for the basic of the analysis you can do by your own if you learn this r actually so you don't need to take a help from some statistician to tell you that okay we need to compute this thing so you have to do this thing so maybe you can spread this thing to all other uh, so uh, from the participants i may Just request that you can spread this thing. That uh, even for these applied subjects, if you want to do some basic statistical analysis, you can do it easily in R. You have to just yes, go yes. through with the spoken tutorials, and it's not much actually. It's if you spend a day or two, you will be able to learn the things. Uh, at, even for the basics of analysis, also very easy. Yes, yes. and then it's the practice which uh, which makes you perfect. A little yeah. basics of statistics we have studied. 
so that is helping me here yeah i think some more uh, tutorials will come about the basics of statistics uh, soon actually in the spoken tutorial but that may help actually a lot Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can I speak a few words? Yeah, yeah please, go. please go ahead, Samizhi. Uh, sir, I'm uh, Shomil Chaudhary. I'm from Kolkata. I'm representing Future Institute of Technology. So uh, a few days ago, our uh, AJOD sir uh, suggested this workshop uh, for us, and uh, 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 we have been using MATLABs actually for some of our classes. But now that we know that it's open source and it's free, uh, we will definitely suggest it to our uh, teachers that sir is open source. Like if you uh, we can try it out. So yeah, thank you for that. Okay, so you can also suggest Scilab to them. Once again, we have the same thing on the FASI website. Uh, 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 all. Scilab is closer to MATLAB, but in case you want to do statistical calculations, R is better than MATLAB. Yeah, we basically do statistical calculations in uh, R is MATLAB. better than MATLAB. Yeah, okay. and also open source. Yeah, that's the main thing. Uh, so uh, for MATLAB, so many of the students cannot afford the extra version, so we have to go with the uh, what you call it thirty-day trial periods. So yeah, yeah. Which, which which will create problems. Uh, yeah, after yeah. thirty days will create problems. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, sir, sir, I want to ask one question. Yes, Amar. Uh, sir, what about the workshop on uh, Scilab? Uh, means uh, when it will be conducted? Uh, it will be on March, right? Yeah, we have already announced uh, uh, on our announcements page. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, looking forward. To it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Okay, so yes, uh, thank you all. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, hand over to Smita. Smita, uh, take over. Yeah, we would like to have a vote of thanks now. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ministry of Education and Pandit Modan Mohan Malviya uh, for supporting this FOSI activity. And uh, then uh, I would like to thank you, Professor Kannan, for uh, always encouraging uh, for us to do something better and good for the society as well as promote uh, open source software. So he only encouraged us to conduct these kinds of workshops to reach out more and more people here. So I would like to thank you, Professor Radhen Nuska Srivastava for uh, supporting us all the time in creating content for the workshop or guiding us uh, on the technical thing that is statistics. So he is always there as a support pillar for us. So then I would like to thank uh, Dr. Subalakshmi and Dr. Uh, Shwetlin for uh, in uh, giving actually all the participants the idea of what college can do and how they can participate uh, through their contribution. They just have to encourage their students and faculty members to contribute. So uh, then they will get benefited. So after that, I would like to uh, thank uh, FOSI team, spoken tutorial team, as well as workshop team. Without their uh, continuous support, we would not have actually conducted this workshop. And uh, lastly, I would like to uh, thank uh, Digvijay and Sudhakar for uh, helping me in conducting this workshop. Thank you all the participants for your uh, actually support. And I hope you have learned a lot of things during this workshop. We are there to help you out even after workshop. Please contact us on contact hyphen R. I will type the email ID if you have any query, anything. And students, please, uh, we are actually right currently offering a semester long fellow, uh, internship. Uh, all the registrations are going on. So I request you to register. And then after registration, you will get an email to complete a screening task. As I told you, there is no uh, actually criteria for selection as a marks or anything. We will be assigning you one screening task. Depending on your submission, you will get selected. So the registrations are on till 5th of February. So contact us on contact hyphen r at the rate fossi.in uh, for any uh, further queries. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a, uh, a good evening. Happy weekend. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank, thank you. you yeah. Bye.